What's going on, people? Welcome to episode 10 of the Trinity. Unpowered. Unpowered by Dangar. Dangar. Unpowered. I'm not here for the gimmicks today. I don't think a lot of us are here for the gimmicks today. This is going to be a big pod. At the time of recording, I'm just going to be honest with you. No point, no point lying. At the time of recording, it's the morning. Very, very early. This has gone out at 6 p.m., but we've actually recorded this at 8 a.m. So you can, and we all went to bed at 2 a.m. So <laughs> you can all imagine that basically only six hours ago, we were still very emotionally and highly charged. And that is really how we've arrived at this pod. Mm. Is it not? Yeah. And it was one of those ones where it was like, I don't know about you guys, but when I woke up this morning and whenever I wake up and it's early, you do the whole... But when after last night's result and knowing that you've got to sort of attack the day, that sigh was just a little bit bigger, just a little bit longer. Yeah. Those it eyes are just a little awful. bit heavier because you kind of remembered everything because you've been unconscious for a few hours, your brain switched yeah. off, gone into a different reality, and then it comes back on. And it's that kind of that moment where you're not really, that you can't really remember everything just yet. You're just waking up and then it hits you to go, oh yeah, that happened last night. Yeah. And look, I, w- I want to say uh, straight out the gate, you know, uh, on the screen to my left, there's Flex, to my right, there's KG, and I'm glad I'm sitting in the middle this morning because I do feel like you need to be separated. Um, I saw, the, uh... I, know, I, just, look, I saw you two getting very angry and animated at each other last night. Um, is everything okay? Is everything so, right? Flex has taken me a thousand years to ask a, qu- answer, ask a question. Yeah. Like he's taking me a long time. It takes a long time to ask me a question. And it's a yes or no question that he has. I asked him a yes or no question. He's doing the madness. It's not simple. I didn't understand it. Even when I look back at that Brentford thing, yeah, is that, are you telling me we've got better players than Brentford? I should have said, just tear it up, rip it up, do all that, all that dumb stuff. The, the mad- yeah, the you, you was better off saying that than saying, uh, no, we don't. Was, no, no, we what, don't have better players than them. I'm saying in the heat of the, what you call it, in the heat of the thing, you're to, there's, this team is shit. <laughs> that's it like it is this team is rubbish we and they proved it on many different occasions and yesterday again like, like i have to say just for just a flex and everyone else listening ten hog has built this shit he has ten hog has created a midfield that's rubbish ten hog i can't he, he's he he can't he has nowhere to turn with getting a midfield of Casemiro, because the plan was before Kobe was coming through, even though they said they're going to bring Kobe in, the plan was Casemiro, Bruno, Mason Mount. You're not doing nothing with that. That's not working. That's not working. And it hasn't worked from the beginning of the season till now. He's tried different things in there. That still hasn't worked. He tried the Amrabat. He's tried the McTominay. He's tried the McTominay and the thing. It hasn't worked. He has, the manager hasn't figured out that thing. So he's he's going to cameras and he's saying it's fine. He knows it's not fine. He knows a team like that can't you can't say that's okay. But then at the same time, we have an issue with um we want the we want the guys to keep the ball for 90 minutes. We struggle to keep the ball for six minutes when we're winning, when we're in the ascendancy, when we we, we can't do it for three minutes. They, yesterday was three minutes, and there's I haven't even seen because we're so rattled by what we saw yesterday, I don't know how they got the ball in the back of the net. We went back to center, and then they scored again. That's the part that I I I can't even. That's the part that I'm like, wait, when did that bit happen? That's the part that I'm trying to really understand because I'm like, whoa, because I don't even know what us lot was saying to each other. I don't even know if the yeah, was it just happened so fast. I don't know if it was deep in argument. I don't know what happened. Do you that's know what the, it was. Do you know what it was. Because uh, I was the same as you, and I was like, well, what happened? Because you're once when it happens in real time, you're sort of doing 10 million things, and particularly with what we do, right? Um, but I watched it back, and for some for some reason, and maybe it's because he gave away the penalty, but Diogo Dallo decides, I'm just going to run with the ball. I'm just going to run with the ball to their penalty. Oh, is that what happened? I yeah, and, 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 he gets, yeah. And, he gets, and he gets tackled, and then they go up the other end of the pitch, and that's when they have the shot, and it gets deflected, and Onana watches it, and it just goes wide. And then obviously, I think. Oh yeah, Chukomenka has the yeah, shot, and it goes. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's from that from that corner that it um, that it results from. And um, but but what I will say though, KG, is I thought 
to be fair, I thought you were on a madness last night. I thought you, I thought you were absolutely on no, no. a bad. Well, well, well. To say that Burnley and Brentford have better players than us, is no, not crazy. Burnley, not Burnley. But I say you did Brentford. say Burnley. You did I, say Burnley I, as well. I mean, I, but that's what I'm saying. Obviously, the head's gone. You're hot. You're hot. You're hot in that moment. Burnley well, was we stopping the bucket Brentford, so Brentford no, do that. No, Burnley, Brentley don't. <laughs> Brentley don't. Oh, Brentford, Brentford, do. Brentford, Absolutely. Brentford, Absolutely. Brentford, 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 Brentford don't have better players than Man United. Brentford don't have better players than Man United. They don't, bro. They don't. Brentford, they don't. Brentford have players. Brentford have players because we we got smoked by them. Not kind of almost what you call it. We got smoked, bro. And in right now, there's even if these guys have got great names on the back of their shirt, application is terrible. So you can't tell me that this. I saw Brentford move to Man United. We've we've had to get out of jail. We've had to score late goals. McTominay saved the day in the first one, and we just got out of there. And we played them again, and there was no getting out of there. There was no saving the day. They were better than us. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong saying that. But, of, so, so would you I'm swap squads then? Would you swap they, squads? I'm saying I would. Uh, well, tear it up, flex. Tear it up. That's what tear it up means, doesn't it? Wait, no. What does tear it up mean? This is insane. Do you? But what does Wait. tear it up mean? It means get rid of all the players. So tear it up, tear it up. I'm saying that. Whoa, you're saying uh, application. I've got players that are good by name, but then when it comes to the, when it comes to doing the job, they can't do it. Flex. That's true. Got, that's true. That's true. So, I, so while while I'm saying while they're like, it sounds like they should. This should be great. This should be. I should be able to say Rashford's better than Ivan Tony and all these other players. But then what I'm getting on the pitch is not someone that's doing that. I've just got a player that's expensive. That's all I've got. When it comes down to in, in in each game, I'm seeing that you man are afraid to be on the ball. You man are afraid. So what? How can I see these are good players? You're not right. But see, here's the thing. What I'm saying, right? What what I can't get get round here is that you're you're saying that the bit what you're saying about them underperforming. They're basically just names because they may as well. If you said they may well, they may as well just be the Burnley players. Like I'm not seeing. How, but you're saying that. These other teams have better squads or better play. That's not true. Like you're, you're right in saying our players are underperforming, and some of them are just aren't good enough to wear the sh like they're not. But if you're saying we got Garnacho, we got Kobe, we got Martinez, you got Dallo, you got Bruno, you got Hoyland, you you, you got flipping Marcus Rashford, or like all these players, bro, they are better players than bloody. Norgard, or they are, they are like they are, but but, but saying that, but you're but what you're doing, is like, you're, you're saying you're saying everything, you're saying the re but you're saying, but really, they're all underperforming. I can't even tell the difference between oh, Brentford I and Man United. So, yeah. really, what you that shows that like what we're doing is not working, like because there's, a, because there's a reason why we're up the table, not where we want to be, but like Brentford are down the bottom. Why is that? Because we have better players. But I'm, saying, I'm saying, but then it's not like I'm saying that the mar right now the margins between Man United and all these other teams, even when you look at Man United Correct. versus Aston Villa, is that like it's it's damn. If the players are better. Why is that? If the if we know we've got better individuals than a lot of them teams, because how can keep, the margin be that small? Well, what what could it be? Getting, we keep getting to this place where it's like we keep getting to this place where we finally realize. We say we we hype up these players. Don't get me wrong. There's some players in there that you name. Kobe yes. Maino. It's a yeah. very good player, yeah? yeah. And he ran out of energy, so he he didn't have enough. Ganacho is a very good player, yeah. And then after, well, Anthony came to the party yesterday. Just to be fair, he came to the party, yeah. but I'm party. I'm gonna say Kobe and Ganacho are very yeah. good players, yeah. Yeah. And then after, I go Martinez, like, when he can't when he's fit, Martin, like the we, best version, but he keeps yeah, getting best version. He's not that's not existent at the moment. Yeah. Bruno, I don't know what's going on with you. I, when I tell you, when we're talking about, we're watching games, bro, and we're seeing, remember we talk about, um, oh, and you're watching it, pass appreciation. I'm talking about, remember like it was 2 no down, and we just can't pass to anyone. And it's not the first time, when I talk about this being the first time seeing this, I've seen this over and over and over again. And that's I get, a, I get that. That's, a, that's an issue. I'm, I'm that my biggest issue is, and it might be obviously, it could be a stretch to say, Hey, um, what do you call it? We're not better than um, Brentford, but I'm like, lads, in these games, for some strange reason, not not in the forest, all these teams that we shouldn't be on a on a on a level with, we're not, we can't control the game. And but, I'm saying, even, but you're what saying, happens, all the that things happens, that happens, to, that happens in every game. So by that logic, we are the worst team in the league. Our players are the worst players in the league, which is not which is not accurate. And no, I, what I don't what I don't 
fun. What I don't understand, though, KG, is there just seems to be this reluctance of like you're not you're not allowed to point to the manager and just go like. I'm having doubts, man. I'm having like to your point there, right? You said earlier on, and you said it last night too, when you yeah. said, um, you know, he's built a poor team, he's made mistakes. You described him as cardinal mistakes last night, the cardinal mistakes, and his uh, talent uh, profile, his talent ID is not good, the setup's not working, etc., etc., etc. So when mm. people sort of do look at that and go, well, with that in mind, yep. yes, the players are rubbish, and yes, a lot of them have to go, but. I tell you what, there might have to be a massive conversation. I don't understand why people get so defensive about this, so defensive. It's almost like to me that because of what happened before with yeah. Jose Mourinho, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, people have just gone, I don't care whether or not he is the right guy or he isn't the right guy. I'm just going to be like blind, unconditional support, which is fine to a point. But, but, then, but then we're, but we get to a point where we're sort of ignoring what is obvious stuff. When you're Manchester United and mm -hmm. you're conceding the most shots in the Premier League by a considerable margin now. Yeah. I mean, last night we passed a 200 shot threshold uh, yeah. in 2024. It's it's yeah. insane. And I get it. Like the players aren't good and maybe they can't do what he wants them to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But as a manager, like that is your job then to be like, right, I've got to fix this. I've got to rectify this, not just blind pass of, oh, I'll wait till the summer. I'll wait till I get a load more money again. How do I fix this now? I mean, it's, it's madness that, the conceding you... late goals that happened in back to back games. It's not even back to back games. That's not even the first time it's happened this season. You can go to Brentford, Chelsea, Copenhagen, Galatasaray. Any other ones you can think of on me conceding late fifth, goals? It's the, it's the, like James Ducker says, this was a really just, I'll give you this and you can carry yeah. on. It's the fifth 4 3 in which Man United have been involved in. They lost three of them, conceded two in four minutes against Bayern, two in a minute and two in four minutes versus Copenhagen, two in five minutes versus Wolves, two in two minutes versus Liverpool, two in two minutes versus Chelsea. Like, and Arsenal, that's, it's remember not, Arsenal at the end? Arsenal. Was it was another one. And, and you so know like, what? Spurs. And, and I get, and I get, and I get, I get player mentality. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that's the case because when apparently when you talk about the manager, you're absolving the players for any blame. And I don't think anyone is. And I don't I think, think anyone's saying like, don't get rid of the players. But I do think there has to be a conversation of going, Eric, why are these things happening over and over and over and over again? And I, I you know, park his quotes to one side of when he comes out after a game in his press performance, because that's what you got to say when you come out. You've got to defend yourself. You've got to defend your team. But why, why, why is he not fixing this? Why is he not, why is he not doing that? And also why, why are we as fans constantly coming up with excuses every single time? Oh, it's the injuries. Oh, it's, you know, the players aren't, you know, good enough. When we do know that, yes, yeah, some of them aren't good enough. But some of them are professional footballers at the end of the day. And we have seen some of them play well. So why can't I get the best out of them? On top of that, if you then would then look at a situation going, well, his sort of tactics were saying the players can't do it or the players aren't listening to what he says. Why is that the case? Why can't he communicate to the players? Why won't they listen to what he says? Some of them just won't be good enough. Some of them would be like, well, are they just not listening? What what are they doing? I don't I don't understand it. And I do think, look, we said that, you know it's going to be two games to kind of keep his job. At the moment, it's an abject failure. We had six points in our pocket in the bag, right? And in, in like the ninety seventh minute of both games, we've ended up with one, <laughs> one. And That's then so my, thing, so my thing, when I talk about this team and stuff, I say that the flip side's happening. I'm saying, look, guys, uh, to the time blue in the face, I can tell you I'm seeing what the manager's done wrong. But then at the same time, I'm saying, well, I can see what the manager's trying to do. And it's not, it's not the when when I make changes, if I say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change things, I'm gonna bring on a I'm gonna bring on a different type of player. I'm gonna take off Casemiro keeps diving in and doing a mad thing. I'm gonna bring in Scott. Hopefully, Scott can give me some solidity and help me hold it down. Can he do it? Absolutely not. He's turning when the ball's coming at him, and what do you call it? Even when we had like this. I I've, I made four um, defensive changes in that game. I bring I've take off. Well, we're forced into some changes. We lose Varane. We lose um, who's the two centre backs? Johnny Evans. Us? We lose Varane. We lose John, Johnny Evans. It's like this. Where where are we going with this thing? Even now, when now I'm bringing on players, I'm saying, you know what, guys, just keep it solid. You hear and hear him say, hey guys, hold on to the ball. I'm not talking ninety minutes. So when we talk about change it it's your job to fix it your job to make this better my thing is well 
with what players and what style because we have to play this type of counter counter um what's it counter attacking football because why we don't want to be on the ball we actually don't want to be on the ball. When we're on the ball, we're uncomfortable as a team. So now it has to be end to end because what you're asking for is really control. Then man don't want to be Does on the ball. Does it have to be end to end? Does it have to be though? Because well, that's I'll, my point too. That's I'll, my I'll, point I'll, too. My, my question to you lot is, well, how do you play in a way that we're not on the ball that much? Yeah, we're not on the ball that much because they can't, they clearly don't want to, they don't want to pass to each other and we still be effective. Counter-attack. We have to soak up and counter-attack. But the problem is we have the, with the defense that we have, we, with defense that we built up now, or we're breaking people breaking like flies. We've lost four center backs in two games. Well, there's no we haven't we can't but even that's do because that. right. So to answer that, the, 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 there's a there's a disconnect. This is what I'm saying about like unfortunately in football, the buck stops and starts at the manager because you're in control. And obviously, every, you have to answer to this. It's just the, it's the rule of the land. It always has been. It always will be. There are caveats and there are other things than other perspectives and other reasons why, like players who have been here too long and like players that aren't good enough, 100,000% agree with that. Hence my whole thing of tear it all up. Nobody gets away scot-free from this. I'm not trying to apportion more blame to just one person in this whole thing. I can name the players on, like, four fingers or maybe one hand just about that I'd maybe keep in this whole tear it up thing. But really it it, it, it stops, starts to stop the manager. So when you're saying like, how, well, how are we supposed to do that with these rubbish players or with this, that like you said, he's contributed to, if you've contributed to the mess, like you rightly so say at a high level and made mistakes and has to undo it, it's your job. You have to find a way. Like it's not acceptable enough to just say, well, the players are rubbish and they're not technical enough. So we're just going to concede over 200 shots in five games. That's just that. No, that's not. What you have to do is ha get the players to be accountable for what they're doing and find a way tactically and systematically to be able to get them to compete. And because also we do have some good players. We have some match winners. It's not like he has. We're, we're acting like Ten Hag has no tools. I didn't say he Zero. No, I'm, well, I'm not saying you're saying that then, but in general, we're saying that it's it's impossible for him to do anything because these players are so rubbish. But we're sitting yeah, in the league. We showed you something. Bro, we, we you are something. Mentally, we're, but we're mentally fragile. We can see this. Agreed. It's Jekyll and high performance. We can see uh, Man United, we score a goal, and all of a sudden, there's we're playing well or we're doing this thing and then after we could go a goal down and we lose our heads we can go we, we can it might even take us to be two goals down before we actually start playing so we've seen the the, the mental fragility with us as a squad is is shocking it's damning and uh, and the problem is it can only get worse because if he comes out and says what well, probably the media would like him to say now is it's bad that we're getting yeah uh, of course two goals. well it's he is kind of saying that He's what well, if he if well, he, no, he doesn't us, say that. he's not he's not saying it. Yeah. If he comes out and says that, I think it's we're at almost at the kill of well, this we're getting close to over. These men have given up in the last two games, they've lost the points, and they knew what happened in the last one. All it you have to be you have to be sharper, you have to be smarter. Get there, you can't get there, even in even in the point of I shouldn't even have to be a manager to say to the low, bro. You just gave away a penalty, the game's almost over, don't lose. That should be that should all of us Agreed. should understand. That. Agreed. 100%. All of us should understand that. But do you know what Delo says? I'm getting yeah, on the run. He went and done his own mad thing. He went and done the his own. Why the picture thing. is the wider picture is though, because again, this is away from this one too. game. It because has yeah, to be the, away from just the, this. The, the wider picture is because I noticed this a lot last night, because people were people do this, they go, So, so it's Eric Ten Hag's fault that Diogo Dallo falls over in the box and gives away a penalty. And I don't think you know some people might because they've got a bit of an agenda, but I don't think the sort of large majority are saying that. I think they're kind of the sort of micro issues. But if you look at the wider problem, there is a huge coaching problem in that side right now massive because to kind of yeah, flex his point is. to flex his point when you're looking at the players that we do have and you know whether they're good enough whatever you, that's up for debate but when we're the worst in the league on certain metrics i.e <laughs> shots faced like that's a coaching problem that, that is a clear coaching problem and from a manager's point of view 
why and how are we in April right now and we've got the same problems that we had in August and why and how has he not rectified that? Because to Flex's point, there are lesser managers with lesser players in the Premier League that have managed to quell and not have that many shots against them. And I'm sure their players are just as shit at passing it as Manchester United players. So why can't he fix that? And at a time in which his job is being evaluated, if you're on performance review, when you're getting negative results, regardless of you use analogy the other day, uh, KG, of like if you ran a shop and your employees or the people that you're managing in the shop are doing a madness, you know, pissing around in the stock room, not doing what they're meant to be doing. Yes, they're going to end up losing their jobs, but so are you, because ultimately the buck stops with you. You're meant to be getting the best out of those people. And when you go into your performance review and they say, why are you underperforming? Why is this shop underperforming? If you don't just go, oh, these people here, they're rubbish. The person who's evaluating you will be like, yeah, but come on, that's your job. Your job's meant to be getting the best out of them. Your job's meant to be um, getting them to a sustainable performance. And also, let's dispel this myth, yeah, that a lot of those players aren't his players, because a lot of them are. And I know people will point to people like Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes and say, well, yeah, but they were there before Eric. But also Eric Ten Hag's co-signed Marcus Rashford getting a new contract. Eric Ten Hag's given Bruno Fernandes the captain's armband. So it's not as if these are players that he doesn't like. These isn't like his players that he's not a fan of or he wanted to get rid of. He wanted to get rid of Harry Maguire and Scott McTominay. That was clear. But these key people we're talking about that, oh, they need to go. They're part of the problem. Eric Ten Hag wants them. I would, he wanted I would, them. I would have, again, with the season that, um, obviously hindsight 2020 and all that stuff, but with the season that Rashford had last season, I would have co-signed him too. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's not a player that I wanted him to walk out the door. He done well. We saw this point every week in, week out. It was Marcus Rashford was on fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then what we what we do have is we took off Rasmus to give us something at the front. Don't make it so easy for that ball to get back to us. Yeah. Criminal. In that game, criminal. And criminal. It's like, and the, the, the one of the biggest issues with it is, mate. It's like you didn't start. You didn't start. And if these guys, you know, when you talk about the micro things, but these micro things are happening on a on a regular basis. These guys, in terms of their, their, their play, there was a moment with Bruno and we said, well, why has he done that? But how many games we're going to say, why has Bruno just done that? We're on the attack, the good ball into the, the good ball into the attacker, the ball doesn't break down, we're in a good position. But no, guess what? Do you know what you're going to do? I'm going to turn over the ball at the worst time ever with the worst type of pass. And we keep seeing that week in, week out. So why are there micro problems? They're becoming, this is on a macro scale. These men keep doing this. This is not a micro thing now. This is every week, every game, we don't learn. And now we say, well, how many five, um, four threes and stuff like that? And I understand the, the manager, you have to fix that. That is on you. Ten Hag has failed. This season, he has been a failure. I, I can't stress that enough. It's, um, the, the way he has to find a new way to go. He has to find a new way to play it. But when I, all I do to, to demand, though, is when you come on as a player, put a shift in, bro. Put a shift in at least, and and and, and, disagree. That's, the problem. and that's the problem. With that. We had Marcus Rashford as the fit man walking about. There's only one run they did at the back, and he said, "Well, you're killing us. We we know our team's deficiencies. You not attacking, you not pressing, you allowing them in is not helping anyone. There's no time to breathe." I don't this disagree, is... and I don't and I don't disagree with that. And this is this is also why. You know, when you were making the point yesterday about, well, if you bring in a new manager and some of these players stay, it'll be the same cycle over and over and over again. And I would understand that if it was a uh, if it was a different environment. But we've already seen significant change at an executive level, not only just with Ineos coming in, but also with we've got a new CEO. We're going to have a new director, a performance director, whatever you want to call him, Jason Wilcox. We're going to have Dan Ashworth. So it's very clear that they're in Ineos are in the mood for change and they're making sweet they reform stand for in the club. Yeah. And if you're and to your to use your words there, Eric Ten Hag has failed this season, then mm -hmm. I don't think it's a wild thought process that if they're looking at someone that they're describing as a failure this season, then they will look to remove the failure. And that's not just the manager, they'll also look at the players as well and go, there's a lot of failure here. We're going to try and get rid of them. We're going to do it. And I just... I don't understand. I mean, maybe I kind of do in the sense of we sort of fear the unknown and we're worried about what's happened in the past. We don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. But 
when you're looking at what's happened this season and particularly in the last couple of weeks, I don't see that why there should be a, a ton of resistance of let's just but get this, let's rip this one apart. I, let's just rip I'm this like, one apart. Well, with 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 like now, yeah, because I was asking the question yesterday. I said, hey guys, if we when we change it. Because if Ineos, like, as you said, Ineos will probably make a decision at the end of the season. And whatever Ineos decide to do, wicked, go for it, yeah? If we change it, what are we willing to understand and accept? Because I don't want to hear to to how much do you think it's going to cost to fix this problem? We need, we need a, we're still, do, we have one Rec we have one striker and he's probably not a recognised striker. In the, in the years of Man United gone by, there would never have just been a Rasmus Hoyland. And the unfit Marshall, but that's where we find ourselves. So we need it has to change. We, need to it has to bolster, change. It has to we have to bolster the um the front because I I believe that it's a culmination of years of things getting wrong, and now it's all at our door. You know when you left stuff for years or you've not operate this club properly players have walked out for free there's been so many things that there's just been a mismanagement at this club and we're seeing all of the effects and yes ten while ten hag is at the helm of this this has been an issue for the longest time we're talking about casemiro all these players where you know obviously i know he didn't identify um casemiro as the player that he wanted from the start of the summer but obviously casem real madrid say hey we got he wants to come and we say, yep, yeah, we'll have that. But we've done, yes, we'll have that many a times. I'm asking you guys now yeah. as um, as fans of the club, yeah. well, under the, new, under the new person that comes, how long are we giving this new person? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I'll how tell you how long. New person, how long are we giving Ineos and how yeah. much do you think it's going to cost to do it? Everything, everything, yeah, every, everything is, is not, these things are not simple because... As you get behind something, just like anything, which we, I think we're stuck on right now, which is why a lot of people want to stay where we are uh, because of this reason, is, is that we want to see, we want the sort of guarantee that we're based upon new evidence, you, the timeline's not going to change, right? Now, that swings and roundabouts, yeah? Sometimes, and this is where it's nuanced in football, sometimes you, you get behind something, right? And then you go, no, no, the Ars we get the Arsenal one, yeah? There's a story of that where we go, no, that's just not it. That, you know, get him out. No, it's not, it's not, it's not. Pay, you know, then they stay with the patients and then now we're seeing a really good team. There's other times whereby we've seen with uh, new managers where they come in and what they show, even if they fail in the first one or two seasons, is something to really get behind. And then the structure behind them supports that vision because they can see it and starts changing the players and keeps the manager the same. But they don't just do it blindly because they're losing, 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 or there's no style of play. They do that because everything is on the same page. But in, in regards to your question, how long will it take? You're 100% right. Of course, the aim of it is not to just keep changing after a season every time or changing after two seasons at a time. But we can't, there's still, no matter what it is in football, the same way how every transfer is a gamble, every decision that you make in this thing is a, is a risk. Everything, everything from bringing in that player for this money, for bringing in that technical director, for bringing in that fitness coach, for bringing in that manager. And it's also a risk where you have to weigh up it's going bad. How long do you stick with something before changing, et cetera, et cetera. But there are natural cutoff points. You, what you're basically getting at, which I understand, and I do I do 100% agree with you, that if we change it all, what you're saying is, I don't want to hear after one year that the coach has been rubbish and then we well, all have to change it. Months. After 18 months. Well, after 18 months, right. After 18 months. However... There's that you can't bring in a new manager, and if Ineos got standards as well, you can't just bring in a manager and say, you know, there's no buyback. Like in this in this series of if the, in this program a program where it's a series, right, and it has like ten episodes in it. The first two or three episodes, and I'm I'm making it smaller just for context. Yeah, you can't just go. Well, it's totally rubbish, but we're all just going to just hang in there in hope that at the end it's going to be good. You have to give some buyback. So it's it's basically what I'm saying is it's a balance, bro. Like, absolutely. Yeah, it shouldn't be. And, 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 but, more, but, but, but here, here's the thing in the bigger context now, there needs, there does, I agree with you, there needs to be even more leeway given because we are going into uncharted territory with the ownership and the structure. So in terms of INEOS, being afforded mistakes and 
You know, yeah. it's going to take a while. I, I know you're going to say people aren't going to do it. Everyone's going to go mad. Like you said, you can say in your spin and Bebe the Glazer, get that. And those things are bad. I agree with you. We have to let these guys make massive decisions, which, which is what needs to happen at Man United. And so far, we can see that they're trying to do that. But we know, it's trying... not magical. There's not. It's, it's not, not. It's not a magical spot. No, it's not. It's not a magical thing. Everyone's coming in thinking Ineos are gonna. Just... No, no. Just... And I agree with that. But it's still what I'm saying is that is still not a reason. And even more so because they're new and are like, we need to get a grip of this thing. They're gonna. I. I don't see how they're not gonna look at it all and say right from the manager right through to the players. We're going to undo all of this. There's only going to be like four or five survivors and we know who they are. Ganacho's fantastic, one for the future. Kobe's fantastic, one for the future. Rasmus Hoyland is extremely raw. Where He needs a big, big support, but obviously he's going to be in the squad. Yeah, uh, free play. That's the, that's the, yeah, that's the like, the, 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 you know, and then the Onana thing, like you, you go, okay, well, with the right team, it could, is, is he all right? He could probably stay for a bit longer. Um, the, the, the Bruno and the Rashford situations, you're like, Change is fresh. You got change. You can't do this. Can't do this. It's over. Luke Shaw. It's over. Wan Bissaka. It's over. Dallo. All right. He can stay, and then you get so, you get someone else who's better. So Dallo's now on the bench. The centre backs. Let's be honest. Casemir, Varane. The injury is always coming back. Now I think that's just what it is. Victor Lindelof, Maguire. It's, no, it's the, the only one is the only one is going to stay is Martinez. Let's be honest. And then you got to build like. Oh, three we don't even know if Leach with the and now with the injuries, cool, yeah. So then you move in, then, yeah. Then you move into midfield. Ericsson, gone. Amrabat gone. Um, McTominay has to go. Um, Casemiro not good enough. Like we only named one midfielder in Kobe Mainly, and then you've got a Mason Mount who's a decent footballer. So you're like, okay, cool. A, a good manager could work with that. So maybe only two in midfield. Then you get to the top end of the pitch, like I said, and it's only really Rasmus and Garnacho. Oh, sorry, my God, um, Ahmad. You think? Could, could could we start getting something? It's like this, Anthony. You're waiting, so it's like all these things need to go out. All, it and is like, all and these and things change. But my answer really now, like, with when I but the, the 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 pushback or not even just no normal pushback. I'm saying okay, well we have to be able to say it's gonna get bad with with ever, where, whoever comes in next. Because if you say okay, the the limit is maybe Europa. You man, we try Champions League, we got moved to in the Champions League. So now it's like, well, what is the standard we're going to say? We're going to have to set for the new manager that we can accept because those games, those big losses, again, if you're talking about Flex when he says rip it all up, well, when you say rip it all up, those losses and those games against these rivals, it's going to happen. When we say we can't allow City to win a treble on our watch, mate, that's going to happen. How do you know it's going to happen like this? Well, and also as well, I, I, it's also as well. I don't think that I don't think that I, I would think I, I would I would hope anyway. And I think quite a few people would think of this: is that if the manager were to go, I don't think it'd be a case of so we would win the league next season, immediate success. Look, obviously, you may like manager. There's always going to be that pressure, particularly if you lose games. But I think we do have to look at this from Ineos's perspective, where they're thinking, right, to flex his point about ripping it all up. That's what they're thinking of doing anyway. Their whole point of coming in is that we're going to rip it all up and start again. So they're at the beginning stages of their rebuild. That They're at the beginning stages of their rebuild. That's what they want to do. And they're having this discussion now because they're at those beginning stages where they're saying, right, OK, we've got this three or four year plan, I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe said. Now, because we're at the early stages of those, well, at the start of that three or four year plan, they're then discussing, OK, do we do we think Eric Ten Hag's the right guy for this three or four year plan? Do we think that he's the right guy? And at the moment, it would probably appear that the answer is no. When it comes to that. And the, and the other part of it is when we're talking about, oh, but then these players will stay because, or some players will stay because it's a fresh start. I push back on that well, but as well, because it is already here. The audit has already started for a lot of these players. And we've also heard that whoever the next manager is, we're not even calling him a manager. He's a head coach because they're doing their own recruitment. So, so Dave Brailsford, Omar Barada, who's going to be making those football decisions, they already know which players they're going to get rid of. I don't think Omar Barada is going to come in and then look at it and go, actually, you know what? Um, we'll see how everyone does for a year. We're not going to get rid of them. They already know who they're getting rid of. So... I, I think I think so I think to, just to finish I think it's a I think it's another part where it's like we have to be conscious that Eric Ten Hag is not their guy he's not their guy and he never was their guy and it was upon Eric Ten Hag to be like 
right, I know that, in, you know, I'm not really, not really your guy. So what can I do to win you over? And let's face it, what he's done to win him over ain't that much at the moment. It's just, it's just not. And anytime there has been something that has gone in his favour, i.e. the Liverpool result at Old Trafford, there's two other things that go against him, like the Brentford game, like the Chelsea game. He's in an, he's in a deficit at the moment in their eyes. And we might not like it, or some people might not like it, see yet another manager come and fail. Because I think that's part, that's probably the biggest part of it. It's because we don't like it. That's that's why I don't like this whole, you ten hog in, ten hog out. I always want Manchester to succeed. I want any player that comes to Manchester United to succeed. That's why I'll never be like, get rid of this manager. This guy's a bold floor. Rah, rah, rah. Because what does that serve? Oh, I look great when he goes. Because I was right. That's what it's about, isn't it? I was right. I, t I called it really early on. And it's not about that. But it's about looking at the reality of just going, this guy, he's probably not going to get the results to keep his job. On top, and if if it was still the old regime, if it was still the old regime, KG, then I would say maybe he'd had a better chance. If it was still just the Glazers, just John Murto, those people in charge, I'd say, you know what, it's, it probably actually doesn't matter. He probably will keep his job come the end of the season because it's their guy. They've committed to that's their guy. But that's not the reality right now. Ineos are looking for their guy. And that's why I've always said the Arteta analogy or comparison isn't a good one because Arteta was Edu and Josh Kroenke's guy. So when it got bad, you can stick yeah. by your guy. When it's going bad and you haven't put that guy in charge, to use the shop analogy, you buy a shop and you go, right, you're the manager. I'll see how well it's going. If it's going badly for a year, why would you stick by him? He's not your guy. People be like, actually, bring your own guy in. That's what they're going to do. That's, that's and, what and they're going the to do. Is, the killer is, my thing is, as long as there's a realistic, because it's time for the fans like ourselves, even the board and stuff, for some realism in this thing. That's true. Yeah. That's true. There's time for some. So whenever, when, not that, when, there's, when that decision's made, yeah, because whatever happens, I'm going to back the next manager as much as I'm backing this one. Yeah? yeah. When that decision's made, I'm saying, well, we have to understand, well, what are the objectives we're setting for ourselves? Because we did say we're going to give this manager three years. It's ending in, it's probably probably going to end 18 months or two years. Yeah. But then circumstances change. That's important too, as well. Because when we said, when we said give him three years, we didn't yeah. know that someone else was going to buy 27% of the club and, and take over football operations. That's an important oh, part of that. That's, a, that's an important part. But I'm saying that, again, this, the importance of what are we saying is our expectation for the new guy. Are we saying, hey, mate, I just want a Europa League finish and to do well in the Cups? Because we have to set a standard because we know that with where we are to, to, to ask someone go in and get everything out of this team who has been, has had the soft underbelly for years. There's you can't been do it in one window. You can't just do that. No, but I'm saying we have to be willing to understand when the, when it gets, when the going gets bad with the new guy, their man, that we're here. Yeah. We, we firm it like uh, within right. the shit period because I would say we're having a shit period with this manager. It would be nice if we said, you know what, we've learned a lot from this season. We go again with what we've all the stuff with all the tools that we have. Let's see where we can go with this. Let's not tear everything out. Let's see, as you said, there's there's some talent here because we're six. There's something here. We're we're somewhere in the table. So let's keep going. We're in the cups. We're doing. We're actually what on the, on the schedule of what we're meant to be. This is about right. We're, we're, we're going far in the Cups and we're here in the league. We're in the Europa, what do you call it? Because the next guy, they'll probably say, this is what we need to meet. And that's what my thing is, at least whoever it is, let us sit. We're not right. about right. We're not. We're not about right. And to, and to oh, flex his point, you've got then? to give Where? something though. You've got. You've got to. I, mean, I think it's it's a case of it's a case of like. So for instance, last season you go the sort of lack of style of play or whatever you can get away with that because you're getting results. If you're getting results and you're winning things, people will park that style of play or the deficiencies in how you're playing to one side because it's working. Marcus Rashford's a great example. People could give a shit if he's jogging back last season. He's scoring goals. Who cares, right? This season, when you're not winning, that's almost when your style of play or the things, those little things, that that's why that's when they Foundations. come important. That's when they come important because what you want is to have a game like last night or against Brentford where you do concede late or you do lose, but people go, I'll tell you what though, I see it. I see it. We played well. I get it. We just don't have, we just don't have that kind of player that, that would, you know, sew this all together, but I see it. I see it. And yeah. the stats suggest that actually we are being really unlucky here. It's just things aren't going our way. Yeah, it's not when, when you, when you're losing and all of those things are going against you and, and, and you're going, well, actually, no, 
we have got the most shots faced and I can't see how we're trying to play. Then that's when people go, well, I We've don't. Lost 40% I don't, of I don't. Our games this year. <laughs> that's yeah. when they go, well, oh. that's not that's not where we're supposed to be. I know Manchester United are rubbish or whatever, but yeah. Manchester United aren't supposed to be going to Brentford and getting dominated. Manchester True. United aren't supposed, even like in our worst state, even if, even if you go, oh, we're not Manchester United at the mid-2000s, the Fergie era's gone, I, I get it. But even a bad Manchester United isn't supposed to be going to Brentford and getting dominated. Even a bad Manchester United isn't supposed to, when we played Sheffield United and sort of scraping past them because we're not very good, a bad Manchester United isn't supposed to have conceded the most shots in the league. That's when you go back to, again, there is a fundamental coaching problem yes, tactical and, problem and, and in I, this team is, and i get it and this and that's the thing because i i feel like we're almost on the either side of the points that we're making now there's there's a time when we say fundamental coaching but i'm saying bro there's a fundamental issue with the players and i don't and i think but that's, that's the thing, KG, i'm not i'm not that's saying there isn't true. that's the thing that's the thing i'm not saying there isn't i'm saying there's both it's rip it all up which is saying there's both and because there's both yeah. that is a combination the combination there is not working bad coaching and bad players leads to yeah. what you get last but, night so people will then look at it and go right so what if you get good coaching with bad players what if you get good coaching with good recruitment well, the point I'm making is, and last the last the first season when he came in, he wanted to play a certain style. He couldn't play it. He looked. He said, "All right, I have to hear. I have this thing. I have I have these players in midfield. You know, I can't do that. Do you know what I'm gonna do? It's a Fred. It's Fred, and I can't remember. It was a Fred and Ericsson or Fred whatever. And we're gonna a fresh Casemiro or a fresher Casemiro and Fred." They they got the job done, and then Bruno did the rest. Yeah, in terms of that's how we played, and then, but then it's not how we wanted to play. So he said, "You know what? This season, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna instead of playing that way because it was more pragmatic last season. It wasn't fancy, but we got the job done. This season, I don't see said, any different. I don't see any difference. See, I don't see that when like like Marcel says, like, oh, I can see the patterns what we're trying to do, or someone posted something on Twitter and like about that first twenty minutes against um, Spurs." When uh, you know the, the pressing triggers, and we did this and we did that, like it's all good looking at these things for like 15, 20 minutes. But essentially, when things start going wrong, that's also part of managing. Like it's not good enough to just say like, well, uh, for twenty minutes against uh, Spurs on the first away game of the season or second away game of the season, we did this one good thing, or uh, for forty five minutes against Wolves, uh, we were actually uh, okay. Like the actual bigger context actually does go into last season. We, we, Eric Ten Hag deserves the credit for last season. We all gave it to him. He dealt with a lot of shit. And as, as, as good as first seasons go, you, you finish third and you get a trophy and you get to a cup you final. Coach. That's what uh, my right, opinion. right. That's, so, that's but in terms of the start, in terms of the football, we all said from like February last year, after the round Barcelona and the Carabao Cup, it's been downwards ever since in terms of the football, regardless of who's fit. From February to the end of last season, we had our strongest team. We did. Mm -hmm. We had it. Yeah. We had Valt Veghorst. Cool. I get it. Like, had Sabitza to come in. We we also say, oh, what's he supposed to do then, players? Well, according to this, he, we were doing better when we had Valt Veghorst and fucking Sabitza, mate. Like, if we if we want to if you want to look at it. So there's so it's not really a, a good measuring stick. And then when you look at like the overall package, right, of injuries or no injuries, right? Of form or no form. There is a common denominator, and that is how other teams make us look. That is the stats that go against us, and that comes from coaching. There's no, there's no sort of um, um, coincidence that someone like, let's say, Ange Postecoglou, yeah, you know, let's say, let's let's look at the other man. Let's look at um, Unai Emery. Yeah, when you look at how their teams play from the from the minute they've got there, even through the bad times. Yeah, forget the history of the clubs. We laugh at Spurs. I'm talking about just fundamental coaching and patterns, yeah? It's recognisable. If you have something that's recognisable, you always got more of a chance of doing things the right way because what you're, what you're instilling in the team is pattern and repetition so that when, when, when application might go out the window because you're not running hard enough, well, it doesn't work if you don't run hard enough, actually, that's true. But when you know, technique fails you or form or injuries fail you, the repetition of what you're putting into the players because the coaching is good gives you, that's where you then get the fans getting the patience of going, well, we've just clearly got injuries. I know what we're trying to do. I can see it because we always do it. 
But as with what we're seeing, player, you should have an expectation that you should be able to look after the ball for at least three minutes. You should be comfortable in the ball. Yeah, but it does come from coaching. It come. It also. No, I, it mean, does. I, say, I, I hear it. But I'm yeah. saying, could there be as a you know, it's a basic requirement? You know, it's like yes. It's the, there's, yes. there's got to be a thing where we say, hey, guys. No, some players, think, some players need to go. That's, that's why Casemiro can't be anymore because he can't keep the ball. That's why McTominay's rub. Yeah, it's true. But in terms of like us being more compact, all right then, if you're a manager and it ain't going well and you've got shit tools and you've got players you can't, make us resolute then. So I'll tell you what, instead of you going pressing up here and you going pressing up there, get in here. Go four five one then. That's why he got praised last season, wasn't it? That's make why, us, why he got praised last make season. Us, make, us more, make us more resolute. Do something. Well, Don't well, and then and then guess what? If you're no, doing, if you're doing something, if you're yeah. if 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 you're te- if you're saying that oh um I, I'm telling the players but they're not doing it, that also makes you look bad as a manager because your your message ain't getting through. It's on you. It's on I you. It. That's, and that's why he got praised last season because he adapted, wasn't it? He tried to at the start. He tweaked it. He adapted. We got into good form and we won a trophy. We got to a final, and he gets praised for that. I don't understand this kind of narrative that if we win it's he's tactical genius but if we lose oh, it's the players fault they've let him down like it's it's always a combination of all of the factors it's always the manager and the players and when it comes to the summer you know the, are, the, are all of the players going to be here no they're not we know they're not we know we a know, lot of them are know, going we hope so because we said we wanted to lose maguire this season He's here. We wanted to lose. There's a lot of players that have just been here for years. And why? Because no one wants to pick up these contracts. Even like, and I'm not even making it about Jaden, but even selling Jaden, even Van der Beek will be back. There's there's players that we owe money. There's players that we saw the we saw the um the look of how things are on the financial aspect of this team. That's what I was going to take. And FFP and FFP is real. So if no, if a if a good deal doesn't come well, in, it might not be anymore. Well, What's yeah, that? Might out. With PSL, they're, they're, they're gonna get rid of it, so yeah. it might not be anymore. Well, that would let us do what that I, I would be like, I'm, I'm I all here. Look like, but yeah, I'm here. Yeah, all here. yeah. And then luxury I'm, tax. Other teams will be other teams. Do well, then we'll never catch these other teams. Well, now it's about how much money you have, really, because at the moment, at least now, the checks and balances almost kind of stop City from doing what they've been doing for years. But I'm saying now, if we, if the FFP situation that we have is where we have to make sure we're balancing the books and we need to get out the Maguires. Someone needs to pick up that big contract. Someone needs to come in and say, hey, that Rashford contract, I'll have that. Um, Casemiro still got, I don't know how many years he's got. Someone has to take that contract. Someone has to take that contract. There's, we've done so, the sins of the past are all here. They're all at, we're, we're looking at all of them and we're saying, hey, I want big change and I want it desperately, guys. I'm willing to, the ne- whoever the next guy is, I'm going to back them as much as this thing. But I'm saying, guys, let's be responsible. Let's be real. When they'll, we will get pumped next season, we will lose. It will have bad moments because this is not a overnight change. It's not. Even with the people style of thing, it, right? people saying, I don't get. I don't get this. This is the bit I don't get. Why you're going so far on this bit? I'm not seeing people going. This is ridiculous. Just get him out and get the new guy in, so we can win the league. People telling me it's still no, eighteen. No, no, no. People are still saying to me eighteen months. This is not an eighteen. But eighteen month. months is enough to see from a from a manager point of view. Not again. It's it's too nuanced. You, we have to sometimes separate the issues and leave them where they are for a bit. If you're just looking at a manager football like the game's an easy game like I'm a coach always told me football is a simple game complicated by idiots like that's yeah. just what he always told me and I always wow oh, you know what that's really it's the same game it's a pitch it's uh, it's, it's, it's an 18 yard box it's a center circle there's two goals and there's fucking four corner flags yeah. like it's the it's it's football like there are other things that go on that are bigger than that Medical. that you have to ascertain I understand Medical. but in terms of like the pure coaching and is a team going in the right direction you can see after 18 months. You can. You can. At least yeah. a little bit. At least a little bit. A little I think bit enough, yeah. enough yeah. to buy in. Yeah. Enough to buy in to go, right, this exactly. is my thing. If it, Like I've mentioned before, right? It's like a business loan, isn't it? You know, you've been given this money. Eric Ten Hag's been given this money to buy these players. Uh, any business, like 18 months in, 24 months in, you would go, right, are we see- am I seeing anything like return on my investment here? Like, what can you offer me? And then I'll then I'll maybe give you more or I'll see how it's going. Like, that. that that's the thing. And I think to Flex's point, it's like, 
I don't think those people that are, that think Ten Hag should go or he's not the right guy, I don't think their expectation is, oh, bring in a Julian Nagelsmann, let's say, so we can win the league next season. I think their their viewpoint is, and maybe Ineos' viewpoint is, we know there's going to be significant change. There already has been significant change. There is going to be more. Are we comfortable? Have we seen enough that we're comfortable with this guy leading this change for the next four or five years because that's what we've said before isn't it it's either you either back him for the next three or four years or you either sack him and you go right we need to get someone in because now's the critical time and it's I don't think it's right or appropriate to compare it to the past because the circumstances are not the same as they were in the past they are they are different and that's what we're having with the faith that's the faith in Ineos in it we're all having faith in Ineos. I don't, even, I don't even think it's necessarily faith in Ineos because I'm like you. We don't, I don't know whether they're going to be good or bad. People look towards their track record with Nice and go, that means they're not going to be good. We we don't know. We don't know that. But there does seem to be this reluctance to look at the reality of the situation and say, they are doing this rebuild thing. They are bringing in their own guys, a new CEO, new sporting director, new performance director, director for whatever you want to call them, new person that's just put in over his, a billion quid of his own money into the club. He's going to want to feel comfortable with his own guy. On top of that, you know, Eric Ten Hag's role, if he does stay, it's changing. He won't even be the manager anymore. He'd be the head coach. And he's gonna have he's gonna have responsibility taken away from. But then that's even that's even more concerning, isn't it? Yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, about the coaching. The one thing the and the saying. coaching isn't working. Oh. Either. That's well, a worry coach. as well. He can coach though. We know we he can coach. It hasn't. This is. There's been things. There's been a lot of circumstances. There's been there's been things that have been mitigating circumstances. You don't just become a bad coach overnight. I can't believe that. We we can't all but say he, that. He can, he can stay stubborn. He can stay stubborn. I, I'm saying we can't just say you're just overnight. You All the experience that you've had in the game, it counts for nothing and it means... I don't think people are calling him a bad coach. I'm not saying I, that. I, but I'm saying, saying that they're making is... All of us here he say Eric Tanag's a bad coach. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Eric Tanag's a bad coach. Of course not. I would say, though, what it does look like, and maybe this is the biggest indictment on him, is it does look like, particularly this season, because when at Man United, it can get shit really fast. And when it does get bad, it's a big club with big responsibilities. And it does look like at the moment, the job has become too big for him. Too big. Mm. How, can, how can you handle these big pressure moments? How can you handle these players, some of them that shouldn't be here with these big personalities and big contracts? How can you handle them? What's your man management like? And it does look like will you get the, them job, in? the job yeah. has got too yeah. big for him in that sense. And and that and and that's, that's a true. concern. That would that would be a worry, wouldn't it? it no one's saying Eric Tenhar could go to a, a team in Bundesliga and, and probably challenge for the title and do well. He could go back to the Netherlands and Eredivisie and he likes to talk about how big of a club Ajax are and they are. And it's no disrespect to them. But it is another level when you go the size, the scope of Manchester United, factor in the Premier League. It does feel like it's got too big, and and some of those things are out of his control. I totally let agree. The Sancho learn, thing. Learning this thing, I would honestly, I would say, but Man United, hey, do you get that opportunity first, to learn? I would say, I would say, hey, guy, listen. First season, we did our thing. This season, we lost our way. We put, we got the right things around you. Let's go again. Let's fix this. I know he's not what you call it when he's saying in the media that our oh, thirty-two shots and thing is not fine. You know that you come from Ajax Total Football. This is this is not how you design. No manager designs their team to be under the cost like this. But we have been, and I need to get over the line. I have to get to the end of the season. Me personally, I would want to see that, but I understand the um Ineos, this is not their guy. But I like said so now I I promise you the same vim, the same energy I will put towards the next manager when it gets bad, because it has to get bad. It will. There's it's just part of football. We'll go through moments where it is not good. That we stick and we say, hey, we're with this manager, we're with this, whatever this rebuild looks like, we're here for the long haul. And we have to be, even when it, we can't have a moment where we say, um, when, because there could be a moment, let's say, if the summer doesn't look the way the summer needs to, and then we get to this point where we now start turning to Ineos and saying, you lot said it was going to be done faster than this, this is a disgrace. Oh, you're 20, you're still in bed with the Glazers, we mm. should never trust a junior. That's anyway. why even Jim Ratcliffe, but then we'll forget, even Jim Ratcliffe himself, even he himself said, 
I can't make this a 10 year plan because fans won't believe us. But what is realistic is a three to five year plan to see some improvement of us, you know, competing for leagues. So he's, he's, he's set it out. He, 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 we're not, but, we're not, fans, we have to buy yeah, and the fans need to get on board with that. That's even him saying it. Even he's saying what you're saying, which is that there ain't a magic wand. There can't be a magic wand. We've been bad for too long. But just because there's no magic wand, it doesn't mean you should stop trying to impact change. That's what that, 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 you know I mean. We, we, absolutely. And that's it. Like the my us the, the point is the same, bro. If they get rid of the manager, yeah, we have to be patient. I promise you, I'm riding, I'm with the next manager, whoever it is, and we have to be patient. Yeah. We have to set we have to set targets of well, what do we want this season? Is it yeah. Europa League? Cool. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Is we that talk of the top four and uh we can't let our rivals come and win it on this patch, bro. We're not even there yet. We can't even talk about where the title goes. We yeah. shouldn't have no like I get it, our biggest team, our biggest rivals, but if we're talking about ripping it apart and starting again, this is what this looks like. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. Episode 10 of the Trinity, unpowered by Dan Gore. Um we're still in our feelings at the time yeah, of positive Black energy. Step. It's not like a usual trinity, is it's it? It's not. It's <laughs> not. It's not. It's not. It, yeah, and it's and the fact that we've recorded it so early, like this yeah. is literally eight a.m. in the morning. Like, as just to give you guys an insight, because you're only going to see this later. We're literally me and Owen are now going into the morning show live. Yeah, yeah. After doing so, this. so if you see in the in the morning show, if you guys say, "Oh, you guys seem really negative this morning," it's because we've already had an hour of. Yeah, I don't know how we go. come to this conclusion that this would be a good idea, but needs must and stuff. And just and, and and the dedication to give you guys the pod, by the way. Yeah, yeah, big up yeah, to yeah. everyone for a massive effort. Big up KG. Big up Owen. Because it's not easy, but this is what we do. You can't just, we can't just, it wasn't just like a, well, it's a bit difficult to do the training today and yeah. and go hiding. It's not that. We have to no. do it. So no. let us know what your thoughts are. Of course, in the comments, it's going to be going off. Everyone's going to have their opinions. We're entering into that period now where it is getting to that, it feels, where it's going to be crazy in the fan base. And Lord help us against Liverpool now. Because if, if that's a bad one, what, what, what happened? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Let us know what you guys are saying. Take care. Uh, we'll see you on episode 11 of the Trinity. And um, yeah, we're out of it. And KG, you're a disgrace and cheat. I have not forgiven you for yesterday for winding me up, bro. Uh, never mind. You just, oh, that why, is, yeah, very, very quickly. Me, very... This is what, I'm sorry, just really quickly. Uh, you, question. Yeah, because you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Uh, no question. Wait, wait. <laughs> just wait, wait. No, 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 no,
Abby, bro, I'm done. I'm done. Matisse, we're finished. I know. I know. They've already said, like, just, yeah, oh, my, oh, my God. Can help us. And it's you know what's going to come in Liverpool. You know, you know what's going to come. Again. You know what's going to come. That whatever confidence we had, it's gone. Giving up the game like that because we can't defend the lead, we have to score four goals and then we can't reply for us to beat Liverpool. Probably, yeah, it's to safe yeah. for a safe margin, we still might be end 4 4. Yeah, uh, right. episode 10 of the Trinity. Take care, guys. We'll see you on the next episode. See you later. Peace. Peace.